As with any major product release that Veeam publishes, we go above and beyond to try to make the upgrade process as seamless for you, our end users, as possible. That said, there are a few considerations that you need to take into account, such as which order to upgrade your Veeam components in. As an example, if you run Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager, that will need to be upgraded prior to your backup and replication server. How about how many versions back of Veeam Backup and Replication can you still have deployed and do an in-place upgrade versus needing to deploy a brand new Backup and Replication server? We'll answer those questions and take a look at the process in the lab now. Okay, now that we're in the lab, let's take a look at exactly what the upgrade process looks like. Before we do that, let me answer the question that I mentioned in the intro. How many versions back of Veeam Backup and Replication can you still have deployed and leverage the in-place upgrade versus needing a brand new Veeam deployment? You can go far back as 9.5 Update 4B. So if you have 9.5 Update 4B or later, you can leverage the in-place upgrade. Now, a couple tips before you start. The first thing is you want to make sure that you've got a good solid configuration backup. And to take a look at that, all you've got to do is navigate to the ribbon options menu in the top left corner. And you can see that menu here represented by the three bars. And when you click on this, leverage your configuration backup option and make sure that that is up to date. If you were to have missed this setting and you didn't configure it or tweak it, now is definitely the time to do it. Make sure you run a backup now before you do the upgrade just in case. Because here at Veeam, we're all about backup, right? So make sure that you've got a fail safe somewhere to revert back to. So check number one. Check number two is if you have any continuously running jobs, such as backup copy jobs, tape jobs, anything that's monitoring a repository for changes as an example, you can tell those jobs because they will have the green play icon uh, right above the, the job icon itself. So you'll be able to see that they are running continuously. Make sure that you shut those down, disable those jobs temporarily so that you can leverage the upgrade. Now, once you've done those couple things and you're ready to start the upgrade process, you simply close down your backup and replication shell or the GUI, launch your ISO so that it mounts, and then start up the setup.exe file here. So once you launch setup, this will open up the splash screen, which allows you to launch the upgrade or the installer, if you will. You can simply click upgrade and this will start up the process. Okay, now that the installer has initialized, you can go through and read the terms of the EULA if you like. Make sure you check the box that accepts the terms as well as the third party components agreement. Hit next. You'll be able to see the versions of your backup catalog. You've got the replication, backup and replication server, backup and replication console. It breaks down all those current versions for you. Simply hit next. This is going to automatically pull the license file that is currently deployed with your current instance of backup and replication. Now, if you were to need a new license file for version 11, depending on what current version of backup and replication you have deployed, this would be the option where you can browse and locate that license file. Now, in this case, we're simply going to click next here because it detected a license file that is compatible. Now, once we do this, this is going to give you an option to specify the service account. In this case, we're simply using a local system account. Also, this is going to enumerate the current SQL backend instance. And typically, you won't need to change anything here since you're just doing an in-place upgrade. Okay, so this pop-up here is going to tell you that this installation will be upgraded automatically on the back end. Now, in this particular example, we're using local SQL Express. If you've got the full version of SQL, then we will upgrade that back end for you automatically as well. Now, this is one of the, the newer options uh, when you look at the installer in the upgrade process that's actually quite intuitive. So for those of you who have upgraded Veeam in the past, you may remember that once you upgraded the Veeam backup and replication server and launched the shell for the first time, it would then prompt you to go through and upgrade the components, such as the transport service on your proxy, the repositories, WAN accelerators, and so on. This actually gives you the ability to do that automatically even before you launch the shell for the first time. So everything will be completely finished when you're ready to open back up the GUI, re-enable those jobs you you know potentially disabled temporarily. So this is a new checkbox that you can enable. In this case, we're gonna check this box to do that automatically for us. 
and click install. And from here, the installer is going to take over. It's going to shut down the backend services that are running. It's going to go through all of the upgrades for you. And then when we're finally finished with this wizard, all those components that are configured right now in Veeam Backup and Replication will be upgraded with their respective services automatically for you in the background. Okay, now that we're finished due to the magic of video editing, the install time will vary based on your environment and the performance that you've got dedicated to your backup and replication server. But in any event, we're done with the upgrade. Now, a couple of final steps that we need to do is once we click finish, this is going to say that we will need to restart our machine in this case for all the changes to take effect. Now, you don't have to do this right now. You can click no. In this case, we're going to click no and close out of the wizard. Now, just a small reminder, if you do run Backup Enterprise Manager, you will need to upgrade that first before your backup and replication server. In this case, in this particular lab, we don't have Backup Enterprise Manager deployed. As you can see, while launching the Backup and Replication GUI, it does indicate that we're on Veeam Backup and Replication version 11. So the upgrade process went smoothly. And just to double check to clarify that, you can go up here once again on the ribbon menu and then simply go down to help and about. And this is actually gonna show you exactly what version that you're on. In this case, you can see the build version that we're on with V11. So this concludes the upgrade process. You're now ready to go re-enable those jobs that you potentially disabled if you did have them, such as the backup copies, tape jobs, and so on. For more tutorials, how-to videos, and documentation on the products, please visit veeam.com and look under the resources. Thanks so much for your time today. We hope you enjoy your fresh new install of V11.